welcome to the Scrum Tapas series. I am Dominic Maximini, and today I will tell you something about the pyramid of impediments. This idea, this model developed after several years of experience when I came across a certain life cycle of impediments in Scrum teams. You see this pyramid here? It represents the amount of time invested in the beginning of the life cycle of a Scrum team into certain areas of impediments. Let me give you some more details. So, in the beginning, when you start as a Scrum Master, usually most of your attention or even all of your attention is on Scrum mechanics. How does the daily Scrum work? How can we get useful results from the retrospective? What is a sprint review? How can we get our stakeholders to collaborate? Stuff like this. Very often, at the same time, the Scrum Master will start team building. Usually it's a bunch of specialists that are a group, but not necessarily a team. They have to go through the team life cycle. Forming, storming, norming, performing. Most Scrum Masters I know tackle both points at the same time, but do usually not proceed further until those two are solved. At a certain point, the team works fairly well and the impediments the team raises are deferring, they are changing. So suddenly it's all about engineering excellence. How can we make testing more successful? How can we do uh, continuous integration? Is clean code maybe something we should use? Are extreme programming practices useful for us or not? So, the Scrum Master will start facilitating conversations around this topic and will help the team to get to the next level of excellence. However, certain aspects of engineering already happen outside the team. For example, the team might not have the full control over their testing environment or staging environment or stuff like that. So you could say this stuff is about team change. <clears throat> if you as a Scrum Master manage to achieve those three levels, you will have a very, very high performing team. And as they are high performing, their focus shifts again. They will start complaining, they will start raising impediments about different fields. Those fields are usually associated to adjacent processes. This means those are processes along the value chain of software delivery. So imagine a team that's working in a water scrum environment. That means once they have the requirements, they can work very, ex very good, very agile on them and they can deliver them to the end. But from the customer request to the scrum team, it might take a long time. So here, you will try to optimize that. So that from customer idea to customer delivery, you have everything optimized for agile delivery. Once you succeeded there, usually the focus shifts even further and we'll hit general processes. That is, do we have a career path that takes into account that everybody on the team is equal and should maybe help out? Or is the career path still focused very much on specialization? Do we have something like agile budgeting in the enterprise? What does the organizational structure look like? Should we have a cell-oriented organization or is it still bureaucratic or functional? Those are things a Scrum Master also will have input for. So here in the upper half, we are talking about organizational change. Again, this pyramid symbolizes the amount of time a Scrum Master usually invests into the different impediment areas at the beginning of a team life cycle. If the team matures, actually the pyramid might stand on top. However, no area will ever be zero. 
because at every point in time the Scrum Master will have to help with mechanics, with team development and so on. So this is the idea of the pyramid of impediments. I hope you learned something. If you want to connect on Xing or LinkedIn, be my guest.